Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we have another video talking about stresses, but today this video is going to be focusing on shear stress. The last video we covered uh, normal stress in the example, and you can click the top if you want to see that video, but pretty much we just talked about using this formula, which is the normal stress average is equal to the magnitude of force over the cross-sectional area uh, perpendicular to the force applied. Okay, And we have to also talked about the common units before in Pascal's. In this problem today, we're going to be dealing with imperial units, so I'll give you some common conversions for that as well. But let's briefly talk about what shear stress is before hopping into the problem. So shear stress, as discussed previously, is the magnitude of internal forces acting parallel to the cross-sectional area we de we're dealing with, uh, otherwise referred to as the transverse cross-sectional area. Now, commonly, shear stress results when a load is applied to a structure. So in this case, I've drawn a figure here. We have two members connected together by a rod with forces acting at each end, okay? And this shear stress is actually transmitted through these connecting uh, members. So the connection being the bolt or the pin or the nail, uh, whichever we're referring to in the problem. So this figure is demonstrating that connection here. And when we actually isolate one of the members, we can see that if we take the cross section that is intersecting uh, with where this member is pulling against it, there's going to be this shear force V created, okay? This is the resulting shear force, and it's always opposing to the load applied. And since the bolt in this scenario is actually uh, resisting axle loading or horizontal translation at two points, this point at the top here and this point at the bottom here, we would consider this as a double shear, where the magnitude of the resultant shear and force is equal to one half the load applied, which is P. And then single shear obviously would be uh, where one area is considered rather than two. And then there's another type of shear stress, which is known as punching shear, which is what this problem is gonna be dealing with today. So let's clean up this area here and actually get into the problem. All right, so now we have everything cleaned up. Just before we hop into the problem though, I just wanted to quickly go over our units here, which are gonna be imperial this time. So we're going to be dealing with PSI, which is represented by pounds per square inch for all of our stress calculations, okay? So other conversions or other magnitudes of PSI would be KSI, which is kilopounds per square inch, and MPSI, which is megapounds per square inch. So similar to Pascal's, what we dealt with before, if we had 10 to the 3 PSI, that would mean we would equal to 1 KSI. And then if we had 10 to the 6 PSI, it would equal to 1 MPSI. So let's read this problem. Let's see what we're dealing with. We have a 100 ton hydraulic punch press and it's used to punch holes in a 0.5 inch thick steel plate, which is right here. If the average punching shear resistance of the steel plate is 40 KSI, determine the maximum diameter hole that can be punched. So this is obviously a punching shear problem. And I already mentioned it previously, but to actually define it, uh, when you are under a punching shear load, the stress created would actually act over the bounds where the outer limits of your punching object is. So that would be around the uh, circumference of this hydraulic press in our case. And it would act throughout the thickness of the member being punched through, which is this steel plate. So let's take a closer look at the cross-sectional area that would actually be affected in this case. All right, so now we can visualize what area we're actually dealing with here. Uh, we can see that as this hydraulic punch press comes down, each one of these pucks that are shot out has a punching shear stress created within this boundary, which is the circumference of our hydraulic press along the thickness as well of our plate. And once that threshold is broken of 40 KSI or equal to 40 KSI, a puck is shot out. And that is our tributary area for this problem. So what else do we need to discuss before we hop into the problem? Well. Why are we determining the max diameter from 40 KSI? Is there an explanation for why we know it's going to be the max diameter? Well, if we know that shear stress has to be greater than or equal to 40 KSI in order to punch a hole through the steel plate, this means that this is the lowest achievable stress in order to do so, 40 KSI. And we know that as surface area tends to increase, the shear stress tends to decrease over the area. Why is that? Because as we increase area, this allows for stress to be uh, distributed over 
more space, right? So that means that our largest diameter will actually be a result of the lowest stress used, right? So now that we're done with all the explaining, we can hop into the problem. The first thing I just want to do quickly is to define what one US ton converts to in pounds. So one US ton is going to be 2,000 pounds. And in this problem, we have 100 tons, meaning that we're going to be left with 200,000 pounds uh, as our numerator for this problem as the shear stress or the shear. As we plug in other values, we can plug in the 40 PSI, which would be 40 times 10 to the 3 for PSI. On top, we have that 200,000 pounds. And then on the bottom, we have area, right? So what would our area be? The area would be the circumference of this circle times the thickness or the height of our steel plate. So we know that circumference for a circle is going to be pi times d. And we know that the height of our plate is 0 0.5 inches. So plugging this in, we're going to have pi times d multiplied by 0 0.5 inches. And then we can isolate 4d, which will leave us with something that looks similar to this. 200,000 pounds over 40 times 10 to the 3 pounds per square inch multiplied by pi, which is constant, no, uh, no unit to that. And then we have the 0.5 inch over here as well. And your units will cancel to leave, leave you with just inches. And the answer will be 3.18 for that max diameter.